Hey, thanks for joining us in the wood shop by Two Dumbasses. In today's episode, we're going to be making these large cribbage boards. Tim bought these XL templates off Rockler, and uh, we're going to make a first, chan uh, first go at making these cribbage boards. Stay with us. Desperado. Sitting in a whole Monte Carlo. A man is out his hollow. Hey, welcome to the wood shop by Two Dumbasses. Uh, in this episode, uh, as mentioned, we're going to be putting together a do-it-yourself cribbage board. We got me interested in it with my uh, daughter and voiced interest in me in building one, and so I looked at the lots of little templates out there. And I decided to go with Rocco for the holidays. They were running specials, and I bought this this template jig kit. It's like twenty-five dollars, and I decided to buy this XL. They have the XL, and then what they call the traveling size, which is smaller. And uh, what, what comes with it is a couple of uh, acrylic templates. And I was a little hesitant about the acrylic because I was thinking, gosh, you know, every time I put a drill through it, it's gonna it's gonna wear out those holes. But Rocker has come up with a prototype, if you will, to where this drill bit actually seats in, and then you push down to that spring and it drills in. It drills in there. And so there's actually no wear points whatsoever with regards to the equipment. Yeah. And uh, they sell this, this drill bit just alone for $16, so an extra uh, five, eight bucks. I got, I got everything. Then it's also got a couple of, I'm gonna call them pins. You pin these jigs in. And uh, the nice thing about this is I do have a drill press, but I don't think you need to use a drill press to, to use this, this kit. And so I decided to use, hey, before I ruin some good wood, I thought what I would do is, is uh, try this out on some pine that I had sitting around as a scrap. And so what you see here was my very first attempt done with a, uh, with a 1x8, and uh, it worked great, with one exception. Um, this drill bit is really designed for hardwoods, and it tears out all through the pine, and there's no way of getting around that. So, Absolutely, if you're going to be building a credit board, uh, utilizing specifically this, this jig, you're not going to be using any softwoods. The other piece that I had as an issue as I started off with this, with the pine, was it's got two holes on each side of this jig to where um, the wind chips will flow out of it. And uh, it would get plugged fairly frequently. And you have, to you have to clear it, otherwise that drill bit will be sitting out and you won't get that to the true center where you want. So just an FYI there, I tried some uh, graphite powder, I tried some silicone, et cetera, to spray on the bit to see if I can improve the slickness and flow, but uh, the graphite probably worked the best, but also created the most mess, so. Anyway, that's just one of the shortcomings that we have to deal with. Well, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use walnut, and uh, we're gonna start to build and leverage this team plan from Rocky. And one of the first things we're gonna do is we're going to, we're going to use, we're gonna use the square piece, and the first thing we have to do is just to make sure now I know that this board is not a straight edge. I know it's not. It's not really that big a deal for what we're gonna be doing because imperfections can be used to really beautify your project. So but what we're gonna do, just from a centering perspective, is use this square and just make sure that I've got it in the same spot. And then we're gonna clamp this down. So that's the very next step. Oh, we're just gonna clamp that thing on there, huh? Yep. So, actually, I'm gonna why don't you grab those clamps? I'm just going to any particular place. Anywhere. Hold on one second. Okay. Hang on, you gotta find that. I'm assuming you want one on the other side? No, I'm not quite right. So I use these machine squares to make sure that hey, we're in a good spot and we're flush. So it's centered on the board, at least that's how I want to see it centered. And I, just as I want to back up is this board, I've not done anything to it. I've not sanded it, nothing. It's just a rough cut board. We'll get to that after we're done putting in the holes. So we've got this clamped in. The next thing we're going to do is then drill, drill our locking pins in. So we have two locking pins that we'll put in. We'll drill these and then once those locking pins are in, we can remove these clamps and we'll drill all the holes that are on on this piece of the, of the jig. So we have this nice little seat of seats right in there. I mean, it works really slick, and then what we do, we put in these locked pins, and they hold that jig in place. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I could just remove this, but hey, I've got everything seated in, so it's not gonna hurt anything leaving it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep on drilling. There's a good example of see how it's all plugged up, and so you gotta try to clean that out, otherwise you won't get a good seat. We complete our first jig to take these locking pins out. 
Okay, two bombs out here. And that's our first jig that we've gotten done so far. So now the next thing that you do, remember we have these locking pins, right? So what you do is you've got three sets of five, or actually 10, so 10 here, 10 here, 10 here, that what we're gonna do is we're gonna move those and we're gonna put a locking pin in each one of those corners of those tens. And now that is completely set up. And what we're gonna do is drill our index. I'm gonna call these our index holes. And then we will move these locking pins back to those index holes. Now what we do is these three sets of 10, we drill those for five more times. And then what we'll do is we'll finish up with this as our back end. In this initial uh, run through on my pine template, I had a lot of tear out and I'm still seeing some tear out right through here and here. So what I'm gonna do is I have given this quite a bit of thought on how could I minimize that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bunch of painter's tape over the top of this and see if that will minimize our tear out. So I'm gonna try this template one more series. And if I continue to see tear out, even after doing that, I'm gonna give Rocker a call. So let's. I've got these all drilled. And again, what we're trying to do is avoid all this tear out that I was seeing on the pine. So let's see how this turned out with the painter's tape. I am still seeing tear out. I've got tear out right here, tear out right here. So I'm going to stop right here with this project and uh, it's a Sunday and I'm going to give a rock or a call on Monday. We've got a number that, hey, if you have questions and uh, this, this isn't satisfactory for me. So um, I'm either A, doing something wrong or there's an extra tip that they may have. So um, I'll share that on, uh, on our next film. Well, we're going to get started. I, as I mentioned earlier, it was Sunday and uh, Rockler's not open. So I consulted our favorite source and you know, that's, that's Google. And Google, I went out and let, went on to Reddit and uh, Reddit, there was a couple of nice tips and they said, Hey, use painter's tape, use two, two layers of, of uh, painter's tape. They also said potentially scribe or center punch in your holes. It's not something I really want to do, but I read another tip that said, Hey, put the drill in reverse uh, slowly to try to score your score, your hole and then turn it into forward. And that will help prevent it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do both. I'm going to put on two layers of painter tape and we're going to go in reverse and then forward at a slow speed and see if that eliminates our, our tear out. The other thing you'll see if you, if you haven't noticed already is I chose to quickly send this through the planer and just see how much of the tear out it would take off. And it took off quite a bit. There's still a couple that's a bad one. That's a bad one. But I'm going to, you see, I've got two layers of painter's tape on here. I've already pre-drilled these off camera, the, the points so that I got my jig all lined up. I'm about ready to start drilling the index holes. The only other thing I'm going to do different in my procedure, as mentioned earlier, is I'm going to put my drill in reverse draw holes and then slowly drill forward. And I'm going to do the rest of the board this way. And then we'll do the big unveil and take the, the painter's tape off. So. A key thing on the indexing, I'm just trying to reiterate. So this was my first. We did this as our next. And what it tells you right here on the, on the jig, on which ones you got to repeat. So we did this as our first one where we did the whole jig. Now we're just doing these repeat holes. First one and now I've done two more since then. I've got two more to complete and then we'll do the back end. Again, you, you create these index holes for the index pins. You put this in here to index and make sure everything stays straight. And then you continue to drill your holes accordingly. So pretty straightforward, really slick operation. Once we get this done, we'll peel this tape off and see how our process is doing on the rip out. So when looking at the holes, I would say this process of using double tape and kind of doing a reverse countersink with the drill dramatically reduced the amount of tear out. There is a couple of places where there's just a little bit of tear out, but nothing to the degree what I was seeing before. So if you're looking for a process to try to help reduce tear out, this, this seems to work. All right, so the board's turned out pretty good so far. Next thing we're gonna use is a CA glue. The CA glue is actually from Starbond. We're using a medium, there's three different types of thicknesses, thin, medium, and, and thick. And uh, I have medium, and then I also got the light brown colored because most of my woods are gonna be light, light brown and I wanna be working with and finishing with. This is basically a different form of like a super glue, basically, but it's called a CA glue. I bought this off of Amazon. Starbond seems to be the, the premier brand out there. Um, they also have a, an element where you can buy a activator. And so once you put this glue on here, you can act it, you can spray it with this activator and that activator will 
like within seconds, and this glue will set up. I currently do not have any of that activator. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a little bit into all these holes. And the basic premise is, is hey, I'm solidifying up. I'm taking those fibers since it's so thin. I am strengthening those holes from the repeated use of putting in the plug, putting in these pins uh, into the board. And the other good thing that this is really good for, it's good for like uh, filling in where some tear out might be. Or also if you have some knots that have some holes in there, you can fill this in. And since it's so thin, it will do a better job of filling those gaps in like regular wood glue. And then you finish, and then you just finish right over the top of it and it's invisible to the user. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just trickle in some of this stuff in each one of these holes and then allow it to set up. I will then re-drill. Redrill, and all I'm doing is redrilling out the excess, but the outside of the hole will already have that glue set up. And uh, like I said, what we're doing is strengthening those holes. And then we're also going to be filling in where we have some of this tear out. So stay tuned. So believe it or not, it's been 12 hours since I put that CA glue in. And I don't know if you can see some of those spots at the bottom of the holes. And it's still wet and hasn't fully cured out. So FYI, I went out and bought some activator. So what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that to uh, cure out is I've decided I'm going to build a box on the bottom of this to hold the cards and the pegs in there. So... I'm going to let, put, set this aside. I'm going to use the dimensions, obviously, to, to build up my box underneath it. And um, that's going to be our next step. So I'm using some oak scrap pieces here that I found in my box. I don't really need to make a, a super deep box for this cribbage board. And I wanted to use oak just because I have plenty of it. It's a lot cheaper. It provides a little bit of a contrast here with, uh, with the walnut. So basically, I've got these two pieces cut. And, now I'm going to, and these are all just going to be straight, straight in butt joints. Uh, I'm not going to get too decorative, too decorative here. And... Uh, and uh, anyway, so that's going to be the next piece is building in my end pieces and, uh, and constructing my box. Once I get that all complete, then I'll send it through my, my, uh, my belt sander and uh, smooth this all out, make sure everything looks great. And uh, we'll take some video of that as well. So I've got this Delta drum sander and there's only, it's a 1632 two inch drum sander I bought used. Super duper happy with it. Uh, one thing, just as an FYI, we'll, we'll do a review on this later on, but it's not built as a planer. It's just meant to minimize the amount of time you spend sanding. And uh, I love this thing. So before I finish cutting all my pieces to size on my box, there's only, the, from a lengthwise perspective, there's some minimums you, you want to put through here. So I'm going to just go ahead and send all my long pieces through here before I cut to size. So I've already got that done and I don't have to worry about uh, cutting them too small. So that's going to be my next step. So let's get started. So you see, after I use that drum sander, it does such a nice job getting off of all of that, and those burn marks that I had on that wood, and all that's left is a natural character. It's at about 100 grit, roughly 80 to 100 grit. So I'll sand just a little bit more. God, it saves just a ton of time. Okay, so I've been sanding on this after the after the drum sander. I did 150, 220, and now 400. And now this baby is really smooth, uh, with the exception of the holes. But one of the things that I'm going to do next is I'm going to wet this down with some water and let the fibers. All the matted down fibers in here will then pop up once it dries. We'll sand it. We'll repeat that one more time. And then this baby will be just like glass. I only do that for like stuff that I'm going to be really fine furnishing, finishing. And this is going to be one of those. So uh, that's our next step. So again, this is just a damp rag. We're going to go ahead and just wash this all down. Just enough to make it moist. And then we're going to let it dry. But you can already start to see what that's going to look like once it's done. It's going to be a beautiful board. So, so far what I've done off camera is I've got this all stained. I've sanded this uh, three times after wetting it. Um, feeling pretty good. I still have some wet stain in the bottom of these holes because it was showing as white. Um, so off camera, I've built the framework for my, I've built the framework for where I'm going to put the cards and the pegs. And what I'm going to do next is we are going to fasten this to the bottom. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there, nail it in, and uh, just to make sure we have a tight bond. And then we'll start to work for the lid uh, for how we're going to hold everything in here. That's our next step. So a couple things, just as an FYI, as I built this box, you can see when I put this on here, once I ear nail it, I have plenty of space and I'm not going to hit those holes. So I feel really good about that, it's with the exception of these cross members. So I won't air nail into these, but I'll air nail out into the outside of the pattern. I decided to do something a little bit off camera. Uh, so this is going to be my lid on my cribbage board on the bottom. And one of the things I started to think about was, one of the things I started to think about was, hey, I'm going to need some sort of a way to lift that lid off of. So what I did off camera is I used a chamfer bit. And what I did is I found center and then measured over, you know, over uh, an inch on each side of center. And I built, I put that chamfer bit and I drew lines so that I knew exactly where to start and stop, stop my uh, router. And I thought it turned out pretty good. So I'm just going to sand this up just a little bit, take off a couple of the nicks, but it looks really good. So, so I thought I'd share with you the stain I use. I mean, there's lots of great stains out there. The one I'm going to be using is called Driftwood. And Driftwood's just a nice little natural... Uh, brings out the natural colors in the wood, so so that's what I'm going to be using. But there's lots of great great stains out there. Um, drop me a line if you if you got any questions. Spray polyurethane on the top and then the rest of the board, 
Um, I'm using a product out here by Miniwax. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use two-inch hinges to attach this. I'm going to put two hinges on here on the inside. I'm going to then I'm going to use a Forstner bit to just countersink just a little bit. And what I have is some rare earth magnets. And I'm going to inset those rare earth magnets. And I'm going to do the same thing on the lid. And those are what's going to hold this this tight. My goal is to use only two, but if I have to use a third, we'll put a third one right here in the center. But I'm hoping the two does the job. So I've got this creepers board all complete. It's got a couple of little nuances to it. Again, this is my first one. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few of these uh, felt coasters on for your casters so that it'll make sure it's level and, and soft when you put it on any nice table. So guys, we're going to wrap up this episode. Um, I, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is, is share off a couple things that I would do different with this model. So what I've done off camera is, is I've put in a couple of magnets. I ended up putting this section in here so that I could get more, more magnetism to hold this shut. And it really does a good job. You can see, hey, it's holding it, holding it tight. Um, the one thing I would do different is, is, hey, I put this as a lid down below, and I think what I would do next time is I would make this the lid and attach all of this to the base. Um, the other thing is, is I have these hinges on the outside. I'm kind of mixed on them. I wanted to put them on the inside, but uh, I was already dealing with this bottom piece being a little, sh little uh, narrow. And as you can see, hey, it's just a little bit of narrowness here. And like I said, I'm going to give this to my, uh, to my uh, wife's cousin, and uh, he'll be a little forgiving, being this is my first cribbage board. But again, I would, I would build this as my base, and then allow the cribbage board to be the lid. The other thing that I'm going to be doing off camera, I'm just trying to wrap this up because the pegs are on back order for a couple of weeks and so I'm trying to wrap up this video. I'm going to put a magnet in here so that those pegs will stick to that magnet and be secure and then this is where the deck of cards is going to be. But overall, pretty happy with it with the first time. Again, you saw I was struggling a little bit with the, the board rip out but as you can see, this looks pretty darn good. Um, I used a, uh, a natural stain to bring out the, the grains. And then I used this, as I said earlier, I used the spray polyurethane. I put uh, three coats on here, very happy with that. So that concludes this project on building out an XL uh, cribbage board. And I'll be putting one together for a much smaller one for my daughter. And uh, stay tuned for, for those episodes. Thanks so much to Dumbass Workshop.